Hispanic Arabic webinars. This lesson is about reading words at a stop or a pause. Objectives. We will try to understand how to pronounce words when you stop or pause when reading. A note here, this is actually a very complicated topic in higher levels of Tajweed, so we're only covering the bare essentials and some general rules. Okay, so the overall ruling or the general rule is whenever stopping on a word, the last letter in the word is read as sakin. So that's really a general rule. However, this normally applies when the last letter in the word carries, and then we've got a list of the characters that will be carried. So any letter which you're stopping on, sorry, any word you're stopping on, and the last letter in the word has a sukun, then obviously that's going to be sakin anyway. However, if the last letter in the word carries either the Dhammatain, the Kasratain, the Fatha, the Kasra, or the Dhamma, then all of those last letters when you're stopping will effectively be read as if they've got a sukun on them. So that's the general rule. So let's look at some examples. So here we've got a word which is at the end of the sentence and the last letter, the meme already is sakin, so that will be pronounced as sakin as expected. So that would be a bat tum. Okay, there's nothing, no surprises there. Now, if we start looking at all the other uh, markings that can take place, we've got effectively the short vowels. So if you stop on any word which has either the fatha, kasra, or the dhamma on the last letter, then the last letter is going to be read as if it's sakin. So our first example here would be read as ma khalaqo. Okay, because the qaf becomes sakin, that's one of the qalqala letters, so it becomes an echo. Then we have the second one with the kasra, so this would be read as birabinas. Okay, so that scene, which the scene that carries the kasra, will be read as if it's sakin. And the last one is Allahu Samad. Okay, so the dal that is carrying the dhamma becomes sakin, and because it's one of the qalqala letters, then it's read with an echo. And then for tanween, there's only two cases when it will become sakin, and that's with the dhammatain and the kasratain. So the first example here is ahad. So the dal again becomes sakin, you don't read the dhammatain, and you get the echo. And the last one there is lahab. And again, the ba, which is carrying the kasratain, becomes sakin and it effectively becomes an echo letter. So that's the general rule and the most common um, examples. The next one is if the word that you're stopping on ends with the tamarbuta and effectively you change the tamarbuta into a ha sakin and this is the soft ha from the bottom of the throat. So here we've got an example. The word here is al atu. So if you're stopping here, that tamabuta at the end, effectively you read it as if it's a ha sakin. So this will be al And you've got to just bring out a tiny bit of a ha sound from the bottom of your throat. Again, it requires a lot of practice um, and you need to sit with a reciter to get that exactly spot on. Now the next one is if you've got a long vowel which comes before the last letter in a word and that last letter is being made sacking because you're going to stop on it. Now in that case, effectively you can read the long vowel either as two lengths long, which is normal, four lengths long or six lengths long. 
Okay, so let's have a look at some examples. So here we've got um, the last word here, which is being um, read is nas. Okay, so we've got the long vowel fata alif. However, the seen, because it carries the kasra, is going sakin because we're stopping. So that last fata alif can be read as too long, four long, or six long. The only thing to be aware, if you choose to do these long vowels, which can go two, four, or six long in a surah, you've got to be consistent. So if you do it four long, all of them have to be four long in your recitation of the surah. Okay, so that last one, um, few words would be bi rabbin nas if it's too long, or you can stretch it to bi rabbin nas four long, or bi rabbin nas okay, six long. So you can stretch it, it's all relative to how fast you read. Another example of that in the next one is we have the kasra ya long vowel and the meme is going sakin. So that avim can again be read two, four, or six long. So that could be avim or avim or avim. And the last one is the long vowel dhamma wow, and again followed by a noon which is going sakin. So that last one kafirun can be read as kafirun or kafirun or kafirun. Okay, and you can make it two, four, six long relative to how fast you read. Now, when stopping on the long vowel, fata alif, it is read as a fata alif. Okay, and this also includes the fata followed by the alif maqsura. So let's just see what we're talking about here. So at the end of the sentence here, we have a wor word which is zil za laha. Okay, so it's ending with the fata alif. So what we do here, we read the fata alif just as it is. So if you're going to end here, it would be zilzalaha. And you just read it as too long, as per normal. Now, because the alif maqsura effectively is an alif, i.e. it's an alif painted as a ya, when you have a letter with fata followed by the alif maqsura effectively it is a fata alif so you apply the same rule so in this example we end by doing the fata alif maqsura too long so it would be saja